few times now, eh? Yeah. 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 Just me think, I'm so, I should tell them to change me out, guys. You know, I can't, can't make me do the same uh, thinking area every time. But it's such a, a powerful thinking area, if I'm using the right words. You know? mm-hmm. Could be using the wrong words for the right, wrong reasons, you know. But fear, eh? Yeah. I, I truly believe that one of the reasons we don't change is because of fear. Mm-hmm. We're afraid of a lot of things, man. Uh, we like to walk around saying we're afraid of nothing, but uh, in the day we're sitting in these chairs because we are afraid of something. And we're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of letting go. We're afraid of if only, isn't it? Yes. If only we live in this if only world and not realizing we can do nothing about the if onlys. Uh, if only genuinely 99% of the time is in the past. We can do nothing about it. And we live in the past then. Because we don't want to let go of the past. We, the fear deceives us so much that we think if we let go of the past, we're going to lose something. Eh? I think one of the biggest things we think we might lose is our identity and who we are. But the problem is identity, the thing we identify with is destroying us. Fear will keep us away from walking the way we should walk with our Lord, with our God, with our belief system. Fear is the very thing that's stopping you from giving it all over. There's a question in the, in the CR book that says, what are you afraid to let go of? Huh? A lot of us like to go, I like when we sit in the office or we're talking in general, we say, we, we're afraid to let go of nothing. We're giving everything over, really? What about when you have a bad day? Hmm? What about when something goes wrong today? What about when you get news you don't want to really hear? Hmm? We say in that moment we're willing to give over everything and let go of everything. But when, when life comes upon us and things come upon us, our behavior says we're not willing to let go of everything. It also tells us we are, we are fueled by fear. Eh? Who, who would like to admit that their whole lives are fueled by fear? <laughs> and many of us don't want to admit that because it's blind. But that's the truth. But let me go a bit deeper. Doubt. You doubt, you doubt, you doubt yourself. You doubt your abilities, you doubt you can make it, you doubt you can get through it. I mean, something as simple as coming here for a period of time, we, we're afraid of. We're afraid of. What are we going to lose while we're here? Let me ask you the question what are you going to lose if you don't do what you need to do? What are you going to lose then? You know, the scripture says that the, the thing that a wicked man or woman fears the most will come upon them. Because you attract that thing. You know? You're so afraid you're going to lose your girlfriend or your boyfriend and you're overly jealous and you're overly protective. What happens at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. You lose them. Because you, a fear drove you. You can't have a good relationship based on fear. One of the best things you can do if you're in that type of mindset is to get to a place where, I remember, and I've told some of my guys this, I remember years ago, <clears throat> sure, I wish I could say last year, I can't. Uh, over 20 years ago. <laughs> I remember going to a, a cell group <clears throat> And obviously I was uh, overly protective over the girlfriend and had issues and what, what. And I remember I'd been doing a course, so I wasn't attending the, the group, the cell group, the new cell group. I was doing all the courses at the church. Mm, effective prayer, I see fishes of men, other courses. You want to know more? No, no. And I walked in that day and I, I noticed something that day. I noticed that uh, someone liked someone. And I wasn't overly jealous. How do I know this? Because they're married today. <laughs> but be that as it may. I remember walking in and going, oh. Insecurity. Eh? And I remember I had a bit of a beard, but it wasn't as great. It was a lot darker. It wasn't this great. I was a lot younger. And uh, I remember the TV was off. And I looked into the TV. And as I looked into the TV, obviously I saw the reflection on my face. And there and then something happened, and I realized, wow, well, all I need is him. I remember I still said it to myself. And it doesn't matter if what I'm seeing is true or not true, but all I need is you. And that day I was set free from jealousy. Set free. Because I wasn't concerned of what I could lose anymore. I knew what, everything I needed was there and then. Be that, be that as it was, later on obviously went weird in the head again. Because you allow your fears in that to come upon you again. Yeah? And one of the biggest things that brings fear, fear into our life is condemnation. We condemn ourselves. We don't realize when we condemn ourselves that we cannot change. Because condemnation is fueled by guilt. You can't use the fuel of guilt to change your life. You can't use it. It brings fear, it brings worry, it brings insecurity. Yeah. What does Romans say in Romans 8 verse 1? There's therefore now no condemnations for those who are in Christ. See, if you're in yourself and you're relying on yourself and your own abilities, there's plenty of condemnation because you know what you're <coughs> capable of, isn't it? You know, you're like, you've, from today I'm going to walk the straight and narrow. And then you've got these quirks. I call them quirks. It's a nice way of saying issues. <laughs> we have these quirks. And it doesn't matter how far you come in your recovery, your quirks will always be there, but you'll manage them a lot better. It won't overpower you anymore. We don't have the power anymore. So a lot of times we allow quirks to overpower us, brings condemnation, we stay where we are. 
Because when there's condemnation, we might as well keep doing what we're doing because this is who we are. There's conviction in your life and there's, there's truth in your life. You're saying, you know what? I have these tendencies to want to do the wrong thing, but I know I have the ability to overcome because of Him. But see, if you're not overcoming because of Him, then you're not walking in Him. You feel a condemnation. I don't care how good you feel about yourself today. It's not about how good you feel about stuff. It's what you know. Because tomorrow or this often you might feel down. And if you allow that overpowering sense of foreboding or fear to overcome you, you go back to what you know. So learn something new. Learn today that fear, you can choose if it's your enemy today, or it can be something that can drive you. Remember the fight or flight. Eh? Why does one person get into the fight and fight the fight, and another person runs? Why? It's the same feeling, isn't it? But one's perception of it's different. Perception is different. For many, many years, every time I've preached or come and taught, I've had this fear, <laughs> insecurity. And the nice thing about it brought me to a place where I grew confidence from it. Because it kept me humble. It kept me humble. So what has happened is, as I've grown, because I've taken that fear or that worry, or what if I make it, what if I speak too quickly, which I do sometimes. But I'm learning how to, as you can hear. Got the hands, eh? Check the hands. Use my hands to control my voice. But if I allowed the fear to overcome me, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you today to talk. And be confident in what I'm saying. And having substance to what I'm saying. So you can either let the fear destroy you, or you can know despite the fear in you, you're still able to do what you need to do. Despite the fear. In spite of. Just because you feel afraid doesn't mean you don't know what to do or what you can do. Just because you have that, that feeling, doesn't, that's not the truth. John 8.32 says what? No, the truth, the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. And understand something, if you walk in truth... You have confidence. What happens is you stop fueling the fear. You stop fueling what? If you start trusting. You start fueling your faith. See, when you trust something... How many of you, when you came in, uh, checked the chair before you sat down? Any of you checked the chair to make sure it's not cracked anywhere? Anybody? There might be one of you sitting here today. You admit it now. Oh, actually, none of you did that. So you had complete confidence that if you sat down, you'd have to sit down and listen to the class. Am I right? Yes. Isn't that trust? So now you're going through a tough time. You're walking and things aren't going the way you should. You say, you know what, Lord? I trust you. I trust you. So in spite of the feeling of fear, you put trust. What do you start doing? You start feeling your faith. Your faith starts growing. Because now you, you, you don't know what's behind that door. And you start imagining what could be behind that door. What could be, what could be waiting for you when, you when you leave. What could be not waiting for you if you stay. So that's behind the door. And you go, no, I don't know what's the next step as such. But you know, I'm going to trust you. And as you walk through that door, you start that feeling maybe of fear. But when you walk through that door, you display faith. When you display faith, you go to the next level of your life. Next level. There's many levels in our lives. We, if we're going to live for eternity, guys, this is, just, this is not even the beginning. This is, just, this is just the introduction. You haven't even started the first chapter. He, his or her fears are widespread, persistent, and intense. Especially fear of being caught for something. Fear of injury or death. Or fear of being put down. Rejection. Now guys, many times we don't say no or yes to the right things because we're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of what people think about us. Because we've grown up with people maybe teasing us or treating us badly, etc. Et so you form the way to cope. You form the way to manage your life. Say yes when you don't really mean yes. Say no when you don't really mean no. You know? It's all based on rejection, all based on fear. I mean, some of us are here and have gone through times where we are completely afraid of death. I'm sure you've heard my testimony when I said I was so afraid of death at one stage, I thought I was dying almost 24-7. It was a horrible couple of months of my life. It was really horrible. None of you have been like that, eh? Yeah. eh? Had panic attacks when your hands turn in. None of you, eh? Yeah. Oh, really? Good. I mean, there's one guy that can... Uh, oh, it's horrible, man. You actually really feel you're going to die. And what, how did that change? I think I've told the story before. I've told the story many times to come because of my testimony. I was on my way to, to go train, and that feeling started coming over me. And what happened was my life had changed. I attended the church. I had experience. I knew that God loved me very much. And as I was driving to train, I felt this panic attack come upon me. And I remember saying out loud, you know what? It's okay. If I die today, I go to heaven. <laughs> That's what I said. That's exactly what I said to myself. That's my thing, guys. That's my thing. But the day I did it was the day I wasn't afraid to die anymore. Huh? The fear of the unknown, isn't it? 
But you get to a place. What did they do? I went over from fear to trust. From doubt to trust. Because it's not about you guys. I think that's the big problem. A lot of times we, we think it's about us. About what, we do, what we do and what we don't do. No, 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 no. It's about what he's done. It's becoming a bit of a preachy now. But that's what it's about. Because if, as long as you rely on what you do, what you don't do, what you've done wrong far away is what you've done good. Isn't it? How many of you are sitting here today feel your good has outweighed your bad? Anybody? Please, by all means, tell me. <laughs> you can. I, I'll just laugh. Or laugh inside. I won't. Because huh? I think if your good outweighed your bad, you'd be sitting in these chairs. Because the ratio would have been different, you know? <laughs> Bit of a different ratio. This is a bad thing. There we go. Insecurities, condemnations, shame. It's a stronghold in our lives, eh? Fear. Fear. So the only reason you in the place you are today is because your heart's filled with the wrong thing. The reason you, the reason you don't break up with a person you know you, need, you know you need to break up with because you're bad for one another, because of fear. What if there's no one else for me? There's no one else for me. Yes, if I tell these two friends, I can't hang out with them anymore, stop being with them, what if there's no more friends for me? We might not say that, but that's why we do what we do, because we feel acceptance here. Yeah, what if they don't accept me there? It's fear. It's lies. Everything you need in life is there for you. And yes, being afraid sometimes is part of the process, and a lot of times part of the process. But it shouldn't immobilize you. It shouldn't destabilize you. It doesn't have to destabilize you. Like I said, if you're nervous, come and speak in front of 20 people. How many people are scared of speaking in front of like this? How many of you would be intimidated to come stand here in front and talk for five minutes? Most of us are. Do you think, I, what, do you think I, I'm not still? Or, you know, I've got to go on Friday and I've got to do a eulogy. There are a lot of people there. People I haven't seen for years. What do you think? Think I'm nervous? Because no. I mustn't do it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because every time you do the opposite of the fear, you grow as a person. I promise you, you grow. You, you grow. Amen. When I arrived here in 2011 and whatever else came my way, I, I didn't know I was going to have a family. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know I was going to work out. I just, I, in, my, in the natural, I couldn't see it. I just didn't understand how it's going to work out. <coughs> And I've done the same in Niza. When I went to Niza, I sold my car and everything else. I didn't know how I was going to work out. And every time I tried to work it out and figure it out, it caused fear in my life. And I thought, am I doing the right thing? But every time I said, you know what? I don't know how. But I believe. See, what's it? If you believe this is what God wants you to do now, and you walk in a God will honor that because he honors your faith. That's it. The just shall live by? By fear. No, my faith. And every time I've let go, and every time you guys let go, and you trust him, he works things out for you, man. Nice. At the end of this day, where do I go? Where do I leave? Where do I leave to? Where do I go? Home. To who? Your wife. And? Your children. Nine years. I, I didn't see that then. I didn't work it out. I, I couldn't work it out. How's it possible? You guys, remember some of you are sitting here today and you're thinking, How? How's my life going to work out? How, 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 what, what if? And sure, all these little things that niggle at you and get you. There's a way. The only reason you're not finding a way is because you're doubting the way. It's the only reason why. You're doubting it. So if I doubt this floor will hold me, or this piece of ground will hold me, will I walk this piece? No. no. But if I look at it, I go, yes, I don't know if this fall, it's, it's, there might be a hole at the bottom, I might fall through, but I go, you know what, it looks a bit dodgy, but I truly believe I must walk this road. Because you know that you, you've got to be that side, and you can't go that way, you can't, you've got to go this way. So if I really believe God wants me to succeed, and I want to be successful, and I'm going to do all those things, whether the road looks rocky or not, if you walk that road, you're walking in faith, doesn't he carry you? Amen. Doesn't he get over that piece of road? Huh? Some of you are sitting here today and right now sitting here going, I don't know what I'm going to do when I leave. And yes, it's a re very real thing to concern yourself with. But I'm telling you now, walk in faith and watch what he'll do. And one more thing. <laughs> I've got to add this to you. He doesn't do it the way you think he's going to do it, guys. No, it's, most of the time, he doesn't do it the way you think. We were talking about help in group place today, but asking for help. And other times, 
there's two things why, why I think we don't ask for. Number one, we don't ask for help because we don't want to look, we don't want to look stupid. Eh? We don't look, look like fools. But there's a beautiful saying, rather look, look like a fool for a moment than a fool for a lifetime. Beautiful saying. <coughs> what do you think of me if I ask for help? No, man. At the same time, people stop asking for help because the answers they get, they didn't expect the answers. How many of you ask for help and the help you're asking for is you expect that help? Eh? I couldn't pay my rent. Couldn't pay my rent. Uh, because what? Because someone stole my money? So the help you expect is what? Money to pay your rent. Now they don't give it to you anymore. Now you're angry. But at the end of the day, if maybe if they don't give it to you, yes, you'll take strain. But maybe, maybe in that you'll learn and you'll be helped. Sometimes we don't ask for help because we're afraid we're not going to get what we ask for. You ask for help, don't ask for help knowing the answer. Ask for help believing you'll get the right answer. Not the wrong answer. You know what I mean, Joe? He's very focused and I like it. Hmm. Understand what causes fear. For example, one may have a fear of authority. Nah. I'm not, I'm not afraid of authority. No. Huh? But every time authority or authoritative figure or anybody tries to speak into your life or correct you, what do you do? You reject it. You think you're rejecting it because you know better. Or you think you know better. No, 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 you're afraid of authority. I heard a beautiful message this weekend on Sunday. And he said, uh, and I, I spoke to my young bad one there about it. And he said that if you, if, you, if you trust in the Lord and you walk in your faith, then you will not have an issue with your authority figures. You won't have people with issues that are above you, that are mental. You won't have an issue with them because, you know what? Yes, maybe they're missing it. Maybe they're saying the wrong thing, but I trust him. And he says to me, obey my authorities. So I listen to truth rather than the way I feel about it. Sometimes people that speak into your life, you might not like them very much. You've got these teachers. Have you seen these teachers in school? And, you, and you, we don't like them as we, rebels. But you've got these goody two-shoe guys that really do well. They end up at university, go become a doctor. And that's their favorite teacher. But we have an issue with that favorite teacher because of the way he talks to us. Meanwhile, we're missing it. If we allowed that guy to speak into our lives, we wouldn't dislike him as much. We would be rot further than what we are today. Because authority is authority. That's it. Traffic officer pulls you over. Now you don't like the way he looks. <laughs> eh? So you start, what do you think is going to happen? And that the funny thing about us is that we'll end up all the way in jail arguing with him and still have an issue with that person, not realizing it's the authority that we disobeyed that put us in this situation. And it tells me if you disobey and you don't want to allow yourself to be submissive and to learn from people in authority, then you're not trusting him. That's it. You're full of fear. You're full of fear. Big revelation. Listen carefully. Doesn't matter what your authority figures do. If you put your trust in God, no matter what they do, the Bible speaks about it, that He still directs your path. Amen. Just because that person in authority might be missing it in your mind, but if you trust in Him, He's still going to direct your path. They can make a decision where they're missing the decision in your mind. Or maybe they are missing it. But let me tell you something. If you're trusting Him, even if He has to do this, you'll speak to that person in authority. You make right. But it's not up to you to tell the authority figure how to make right. And you're not in trust, you're in fear. Eh? Who's your favorite teacher? No. <laughs> school. Who's your favorite teacher in school? My Why? Because he saved my, saved my life when I was young age. Okay. He took the right path when I was getting involved with the wrong people. And that's why you're here today. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a problem in school, so. Yeah. Anybody else? Mm-hmm. Why? She was my English teacher. So you can speak English because of her? That's where I like her? No, you asked. No, I'm asking why. Um, why is she your favorite teacher? She was my favorite teacher because I think she, she encouraged me. Ah. My two favorite teachers were Mrs. Tilling and Mrs. Van der Linde, primary school. High school, I had favorite teachers for the wrong reasons. <laughs> well, we all have that issue, don't we? Yeah. But primary school was Miss Fenlinda. Miss Fenlinda taught me how to play chess, and I was also a library center prefect. She was always nice to me, no matter how much nonsense I caused. That's why I liked her. You see? That's why I liked her. Mrs. Huh? Tilling, because she always put me ahead of the players. I used to have to sing when I was younger, so I was in a lot of plays. Not anymore, I must be. They laugh at me a lot. Huh? But I liked her because she was always nice to me. But the teachers that would correct me, or have to give me a hiding, or tune me for my bad behavior, they weren't my favorite teachers. I remember Mrs. Bell, Mrs. Bell and Mrs. Howell. 
great teachers, really good teachers, Mrs. Jarvis, but they always used to give me hassles because I was naughty. So you think I was like, oh, I'm looking forward to going to that class. Not a chance. Looked forward like, to hiding in the library or being in the concert area. You see what I'm trying to get at? Sometimes we should have a favorite teacher because they truly taught us. Those teachers that I mentioned that weren't my favorites had a lot more to offer. Even though the teachers gave me a lot. I appreciate it. They had a lot more to offer, but I never allowed them to offer that to me. Always clashed. Sometimes the person you dislike the most in authority is maybe the person who will teach you the most. Amen. <laughs> 1 Peter 3, 13, 14 says, And who... Who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? Condemnation, conviction. So conviction, you be a follower of something that's good. Condemnation, you're a follower of something that's bad. Because you like that feeling to control you. Conviction is, ooh, I don't like this feeling, but you know what I'm doing is bad. I'm going to stop what I'm doing is bad. You know, whilst time, guess what? Everything will be good again. But if you keep being bad, <laughs> you remain bad. But if you suffer for righteous sake, happy are you. And you will not be afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Okay? For many years, it took me a long time when cops pulled me over that I wasn't insecure. Not that I had anything on me, but because, <laughs> because of the stigma you created in yourself. It's a wonderful thing now when I get pulled over. I got pulled over five times over there. Well, it's crazy. Huh? Just smile. You know, it's like the fifth time you guys are pulling me over. I was quite busy. You know, different, different part, checking my license. It was such a nice feeling to sit there. Now, there's nothing in your car. You've made no maracas, and your license is up to date. Huh? But before that, your license is out of date. Some of you might know what I'm talking about. <coughs> you know, you've been making money, like getting you know, your stuff in the car. It's horrible, man. But it shows you how you've got to change your mindset. That even when you walk in the straight and narrow, you still got this, this doubt in yourself. But it changes over time. Imagine in my recovery, every time I saw them, I turned around just because of the feeling I had towards it. Okay? I would have been chased down by now. They would chase me down for nothing. Isaiah 8, 13, 14 says, Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be, be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for you a sanctuary. A lot more important for you to make him happy than allow your feelings to control you. So yes, I'm overwhelmed with fear. But you know, it's a lot more important to be in his sanctuary. Because you ask to let go of things you don't really want to let go of. Let me tell you that now. <coughs> But it's a very powerful thing when you let go of certain things. Some of you are sitting here today, there's things you know you need to let go of, but you justify why you should hold on to them. Does that make sense? Let go of it. Don't use your own let go of it because you're afraid. Don't use it why. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Very nice scripture. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Understand? You can have fear in your life, but you don't operate in the spirit of that fear. See, if you operate in the spirit of something, it overwhelms you. You operate in the spirit of drug addiction. It controls you. It's destructive. There's no, there's no drug that's productive. <laughs> you can produce drugs, but in your life, it destroys you. So what happens is, when you're half and half in that thing, you're still functioning as a person. But when you get into the spirit of that thing, you become destructive, isn't it? Just as much as it starts destroying you, you just start destroying those things around you. So now more. If you allow fear to be in the spirit of fear, you'll also be destructive, because you'll too, be too afraid to move forward. So don't operate in the spirit of the fear. Just know there's, there's fear and know you need to do what you need to do. That's it. Don't be in the spirit because you don't have the spirit of fear but of power. Sound power. mind. Power. That so means you what you're believing is, is fact. And sound mind, another translation says, of self-discipline. That's something we, we've lacked, isn't it? But we have that spirit. It says you can operate in the spirit of self-discipline. So now you feel afraid. You feel like you can't do it. You feel like you can't move forward. But guess what he says? You have a spirit of self-discipline. You have that spirit. You choose to walk in it. Sometimes you choose to walk in the spirit of fear. You choose. You want to know about choice? Everything's a choice. There's your choice. You decide today what you walk in. You decide now. 1 John 4, 18. There's no, love in fear. There's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Okay. Six point program to overcoming fear might be Limit, restrict, fear-inducing mental input. What are you focused on, gentlemen? Let me tell you something now. If you're full of fear, you're focusing on all the things that make you afraid. It speaks about it here. Your brain, when, you, when you're afraid of something, you, don't, you can't focus on one thing. If you allow fear to control, you can't focus on one thing. You focus broad spectrum. Everything else, that's why you think there's a lion in the bush. Eh? 
that person speaking bad about you. Even though it's the more fear overwhelms you, the higher you've gotten over the past few days, the more you, you split focused. That person saying something about you, they're going to know what you're doing, huh? yeah. they're going to catch you, they don't do all that thing. And then none of that actually happens, but your brain's scattered. Yeah. See, when you start coming to recovery, you start focusing. You start... And what happens if you notice when you're having a bad day? You notice you start focusing on everything else but your recovery. You're focusing on what the monitor said to you. You're focusing on what he said to you last week. You're focusing on what you're worried about. Everything that you're afraid of comes back to you and you're focused everywhere. You can't move forward. You can't do your homework. You, know, you don't feel like doing your homework now because you're upset. Okay? But that's you're playing that thing over and over again. You cannot focus. You cannot concentrate. You cannot do what you need to do. Speak to yourself in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Remember, we have spoken about this before. If you're depressed, if you're really down, you're having a bad day, you notice it's very difficult to be thankful for something. I like to ask my guys that if they feel down. I say, what are you thankful for? Uh, uh, isn't that true? Mm-hmm. Pay attention. You're feeling down today. So let me ask them, if you want to come out of that depression, what do you need to start doing? Say, thank you for my t-shirt, if you ask it, man. <laughs> thank you for my shoes. Just say, thank you. Thank you. So if there's fear, it says, think on things that are lovely and of good report. And the God of peace is with you. will be with you. But if you think on everything that's not of good report and is fearful, you in your head, you think God's left you. He hasn't left you. You just focus on the wrong thing. You focus on everything else but Him. Isn't it? How many of you guys when you're in a bad space is focused on God? Not a chance, man. <laughs> not a chance. You actually start turning on Him. Because if, he, if He's God, huh? why are you letting me go through what I'm going through? No, no, no. You're the only one that's letting yourself go through what you're going through right now. Every one of you sitting here right now is safe. You're safe right now. And God's working on your behalf. And He's working in your heart. He's working on who you are. He's doing that for you. But then we start taking it back. Ah, oh, You're straight back into fear. God will not honor your fear. He will not. He honors your faith. Pray. Lay your fears before God. Release them to Him. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you, lay, if you lay your fears before God, you don't go, you know, God, I'm giving this over to you. When you walk out, you worry about it all the time. You've not laid it down by his feet. You haven't. Remember a young man, in many years ago, one of my counselees, came to me and said, yes, man, I can't stop thinking about my ex-girlfriend. This keeps coming up every day, but he'd been there for quite a while and he's doing very well. So I heard him and I said, well, stop worrying about it. Yeah, oh, but I said, stop worrying about it. Then I realized something that, 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 was, that was based in fear. So what do you think I asked him to do? Every time he thinks about it, you pray for her. Every time. What do you think started happening? Yes. Because his worry was based on fear. So what he did he do? He took it and he said, God, and what happened? He realized that it wasn't God reminding him about her. It was the enemy trying to put him back his old way. So if you're thinking about things, you're worrying about things, pray for her. Because I'm telling you now, if it's from the wrong spirit and you're identifying with the wrong thing concerning her or him or anything you're worried about, and it's not from God, it will disappear. Stop. And if it's from God, you'll have confidence and faith in that situation that it'll work out the way He wants it to work out. Audit your fear responses. Keyword, respond. Get in the ring to fight, respond. In a situation that's a bit thingy, focus. You know, a good fighter, a good fighter is a person that gets into the situation and he's focused. You've got brawlers. 95% of us brawlers, man. Swimmers, if you want to call it that. Or big, I mean, he tired or whatever. But you've got 5% of guys that can fight, man. You know why they can fight? Because they're bored. No, 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 no. Because when they're in that situation, they are focused. They see what they need to see. They don't worry about, what if I don't eat hard enough? What if this? And, ooh, he's going to beat me up. They, they, they think in streamline. They're just, okay, we're in this situation. And they see what they need to see, and they do what they need to do. A person, you know, a person's a good fighter. If he's a martial artist or a boxer, and he gets in, that, he gets in a fight... Look, I'm not advocating fighting. I'm trying to show you something. He's still able to use the things he learned in that thing. In that situation. He takes what he's learned and he applies it. So how much more, if we're in a situation where we're full of fear, and we apply what we've learned? Because many of us, we believe if we don't apply what we learned, we leave here and we go back to our old ways. Not necessarily drugging and using. We go back to our old ways in the sense of this. But we go back and we lay around. We go visit old friends. We don't go to church like we're supposed to do. We don't find a mentor like we're supposed to. We make excuses. Ah, oh, but that person's not good enough. Hello? 
It's a principle. Authority, mentorship is a principle. It's not the person, it's the principle. Focus on yourself as a person, not on your performance. Be honest with yourself, man. If you're not where you think you are, just allow the process to get better. You know, you're, not, you're not here to beat anybody else. You're just here to be the best you you can be. Let me tell you, the best you that you can be, that God's created you to be, it's going to help, help people, man. It's going to help people. But see, you want to be that person. You want to be that person. I mean, you want to be that person, you can't be that person. Good sprinters, good runners, good athletes. They're not focused on beating the person next to them. They're focused on beating their time. Isn't it? When you practice, you focus on beating your time. And you focus on beating your time again and again. You're not focused on beating his time. Isn't that what we're like sometimes? When we're running or we're competing, we're focusing on beating that person. How about just beating yourself, man? Because every time you beat yourself and you beat yourself and you beat yourself, you are getting better. But while you're trying to focus on him, you're getting better. You place fear with love. Place fear with love. Where's my clicky finger guy? Okay. <laughs> okay. Whatever you do in the face of fear is what you identify with. Whatever you do in the face of fear is what you identify with. So if you run away, that's what you identify with. You can't handle it, you can't go through it, you can't process it. What do you do in the face of fear is what you identify with. So look at what you do in the face of fear. Not just face of fear in a, in a, in a physical altercation, but also in the face of fear in when something doesn't go your way. What do you, yeah. what do, you do when something doesn't go your way? How do you respond? So what it tells me is this. If, if you're identifying with the wrong thing, you must change what you identify it with. Isn't what you learn in life coaching, guys? Huh? What, do you, what is your reference point? So if, a reference point, if your reference point is rejection and you're trying to change your life, but you saw reference from rejection, you're not going to change your life. Why? Because you're referencing from rejection. If you saw rebellious, you don't want to listen to authority, and you're, re you're referencing from rebellion. Re Where has rebellion ever been constructive? Hey? Shame, the poor Russians, and <laughs> the French, and that, the law of health, people died because of that rebellion. And none of those countries, at the time, for a moment of time, ever grew to its stature again because of the rebellion. So in spite of them getting freedom, they're still destroyed. Their freedom. Their freedom wasn't freedom anymore. Fear. I cannot help the feelings of intense fear. Hey, you, feel that you can't help the feelings of intense fear. So, this feeling is a bluff to my mind and body. It's not grounded in truth. That's what you remind yourself. It's a bluff to my mind and body. It's not grounded in truth. Because it's not the truth. Fear. Feeling of doom. Feeling I'm going to die. Fact. The time of death is in God's hands. Choose to trust Him. Fear. I'm hopeless and I can never change. Well, some of us have felt like that. I know I felt like that before. Hmm? Fact. In Christ, I'm a new person. Nothing is hopeless. Nothing is hopeless. Have you seen your book? Denial. Huh? Powerless. Hmm? Hope. Sanity. See, once you get hope, you start being sane. And what the definition of sanity is basing your decisions on truth. Basing your decisions on truth. You know what? This guy's bigger than me. I'm, uh, I'm going to get in this situation, but I've been training for a year. I don't know what's going to happen out there, but I've learned how to handle myself in here. Face your life on truth. Stop reacting. Fear. To be safe, I must be in control. Man, we weren't very good at controlling things. <laughs> Sometimes the thing we want to control is not the thing we need to control. Hmm? God is in control of my life. He's with me every step of the way. He's with me. Fear of what others think. Peace comes from pleasing him, not pleasing man. Hmm? You think because you please everybody likes you now, there's peace. No, 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 that's false peace. And you please him. You do what he wants you to do. That brings peace because you're not, no one else controls you, nothing else controls you. Do you understand? When you allow fear of man to control you, you're being controlled. You're being controlled, guys. But if you're pleasing him, guess what? He is the Alpha and Omega. Beginning and the end. Amen. It's a beautiful place to be. <coughs> and I think I'm done. Now. <laughs> yeah, bye. Close your eyes. Father God, I want to thank you for your truth in our lives. 
I want to thank you, Lord, that in spite of us feeling fearful sometimes, that we don't operate in the spirit of fear, but we operate in the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind of self-discipline. I think it's not, a, not just something we're listening to today, but something we can apply, Lord. We know the only person we need to please is you, Lord. In Jesus' name.